Welcome once again. South Africa's education authorities are casting a spotlight on teenage schoolgirls after an increase in teenage pregnancies. In the last year, more than 90,000 teenage schoolgirls have fallen pregnant. And according to the Department of Education, the increase comes on the back of the COVID-19 pandemic. Some of the learners who fell pregnant were between the ages of 10 and 14. And as a result of pregnancies, about a third of girls have dropped out of school. Now, these alarming figures have been released by the country's Minister of Basic Education, Angie Moshega, in a written parliamentary reply. What organizations say, uh, organizations rather like the Save the Children South Africa, uh, are now calling on government and families and communities also to support the sexual health education of adolescents. Now joining us is uh, Marumo Segobela, who's uh, Save the Children's Health and Nutrition uh, Thematic Manager, to talk about these high rates of teenage pregnancies. Good morning, Marumo. Thanks for joining us. Good morning and thank you. And also good morning to your viewers at home. Yeah, it's pretty shocking figures. You know, I did, you know, a little research and looked at the, you know, difference between in the, in the last 10 years, roughly. And it's, it's frightening seeing these figures in 2022. Why do you think today pregnancies are on the increase? What are the factors that you might point out? It is indeed shocking to us. Uh, South Africa is a nation as well, and, and you are absolutely right. If you look at uh, what has happened in the past two years, uh, primarily the year 2021 and 2022, because those figures are inflection of that time period, this is the year that South Africa has experienced very hard lockdown measures in terms of COVID-19. And what has happened there is that most of our children, you know, adolescents and young people, did not have access to two main service points, which were sort of, you know, working towards the prevention of uh, this high rates of teenage pregnancies. One, they didn't have access to schools because all our schools in the country were closed. And even when they started to open, uh, you know, systematically, it was through a rotational basis. And therefore, that meant a lot of our teenagers would not have access to the basics of sexuality education that had been taught in schools. Because you would also acknowledge that in South Africa, most of the efforts towards keeping teenage pregnancies are all centered or geared towards the school environment. So once you close the school, teenagers are left wanting at home and with no one to interact with them. Secondly, all our primary health care facilities in terms of, uh, you know, health care centers within the communities were also, you know, operating, I would say operating at minimal basis because the priority was to prepare for the unknown, which was the surge in COVID-19 cases. And therefore, our teenagers also did not have access to the much needed uh, sexual and reproductive health and rights services, services such as access to condoms, contraceptives, and, and other measures that they would normally get. So they were no longer having access. So the result, the rise in the number of teenage pregnancies. Uh, we will come to talk about what the, fam the role of the family is, but let's talk about the government. Now, a few of these teenagers have been interviewed and they've shared different reasons why this has happened or why this is happening. Some of them have talked about the lack of access to condoms and then being embarrassed to have conversations, not just with their parents, but even with the school principal. Some of them have talked about it not being in you know, bathrooms and all that. Do you think that you know, the government, having looked into some of the reasons that these teenagers have complained about uh, not being able to protect themselves, do you think that the government is doing enough to deal with teenage pregnancies in the country? Um, absolutely. I mean, let's look at it in this way. From policy, the government of South Africa is doing very well. There are a number of policies which actually support the provision as well as access to sexual and reproductive health and rights services for our adolescents and young people. One, when you look at the school environment, we've got a policy that is called the you know, comprehensive sexuality education, which is policy. But then the challenge becomes with implementation. The policy is there but then there are gaps in terms of implementation because there's not sufficient human resources to implement the policy. There's, there's not sufficient financial resources to make sure that all the grades which are within the prescript of the policy are being covered. Secondly, you look at the healthcare facilities. Most of our facilities within the country are all, almost all of, all of them are pushing towards, you know, achieving what we call adolescents and youth friendly status, as well as ideal clinic service status. But then the challenge also becomes in availability of services. Our adolescents or teenagers might choose a certain service. Let me just take a simple example. 
they go to a local clinic and they want to perform a choice on termination of pregnancy, then you find that that particular facility is not able to do the procedure. They have got to then refer them to the next facility, which is about 100 kilometers away. So between that distance and the facility, a lot of things goes wrong. They choose, for example, to make use of an intrauterine device as a method of prevention for pregnancy. But then they are told it cannot be performed within the facility, only private healthcare facilities. But when you look at the service plan for the particular healthcare facility, it is listed as one of the services. So the policies are good. We've got adolescents and youth health policy. We've got comprehensive sexual education policy. We've got other policies that try to, you know, sort of comprehend, you know, what is happening with our adolescents and young people by three main departments. Basic education has got good policies. You know, I mean, Department of Health has got good, uh, good policies. Department of Social Development also has got good policies. You look at the policies such as the integrated school health program. It is there. It is integrated. It's meant to bring basic education, health and social development together so that we are able to deal with these challenges our young people and you know, the challenges of access to services that our young people are, are, are faced with but the challenge also remains the implementation Marubo, uh I, I would like you know that we also accept that you know there's a huge anomaly here because we're talking about teenage pregnancies and so there's you know the aspect of sexual assault you know and of course you know you know an increased number of persons having sex with, I, I think I can call them minors, uh, because the, the figures in South Africa range between 10 to 14 and 15 to 19. Um, and there, of course, you know, statistics show the, the thousands, you know, of teenage pregnancies between 10 to 14 years old and between 15 to 19, which is shocking. So I want you to, you know, talk about that aspect, you know. You know why is there such an alarming rate of, I would call this sexual assault, um, you know, and so can you can you share, you know, about that aspect, um, where these teenage pregnancies are coming from? You know, if this you know shows an increased level of sexual assault uh, in South Africa, um, and if there's also certain regions, because um, Hateng, according to uh, the statistics in 2021, had 23,000 in just one year. Absolutely, and, and you are spot on. I personally call them baby pregnancies because what we have seen happening in the past two years is, is quite unprecedented. And you are right. We have seen Houghton, for example, recording the highest number of baby pregnancies, the ages between 10 and, and, and 14 years. A lot more teenage, I mean, young people, you know, early teen stages, before they could even understand the basics of what is happening with their bodies, are already fully pregnant. And of course, there are many contributing factors. We cannot look at government alone. Let us also look at the role that parents play within the household. Because if you look at these statistics we are talking about right now, it reflects the time where in our teenagers were in the care of parents right at home. It is saying to us as a nation in South Africa, there's a gap in terms of parenthood. What are our parents doing? You know, what, are, what sort of conversations do parents have with our teenagers as early as possible? Do they leave that to somebody else to fill the gap? And in this case, we can see it has been left out to the educators. It has been left out to ourselves, civil society organization. It has been left to the Department of Health. And now when they are kept at home, who talks to them? No one talks to them. And our parents, our parents also, does acknowledge there's a gap. They don't have skills themselves to talk to young people about their sexual and reproductive health and rights. So that is the gap that has been acknowledged and we need to close it as a nation. And secondary to that, you are absolutely correct. These kind of pregnancies are actually, you know, statutory rape because we're talking about babies 10 to 14 years of age. The question is, who are the perpetrators? We have also seen in this time period that we are reflecting that our very own National Minister of Police has actually come on to say there has been an increase in the numbers of, of, of crimes, especially gender-based violence that has been, uh, you know, perpetuated when, when teenagers were locked with uh, uh, so-called perpetrators within the households. But then for any of us to take action, we are, you know, we encourage community members to report these cases. Definitely within communities, someone knows who has impregnated this 10-year-old. Someone knows who has impregnated this 14-year-old. The challenge is, if they don't report, we would not know. 
will only reflect on the statistics that we get of deliveries from the healthcare facilities. But let us bring the perpetrators forward so that the law can deal with them because it is against the law for anyone to impregnate a young child as early as 11, 12 years. Um, let's, let's just look at this for a little bit. Now, according to reports by the UNFPA, countries in the eastern and southern regions in Africa have the highest adolescent teenage pregnancy rates in the world. Now, what is it about these region, regions that encourage young people to involve themselves in unprotected sexual intercourse? And would you say that there is a bit more focus on the girls and maybe less focus on the boys? Now, you've talked about the fact that in some cases it's statutory rape, but in some other cases, the both parties involved are actually adolescents, the teenagers themselves. So how much information is being put out by the South African government to ensure that these children are educated and are aware of the fact that what they are doing is wrong, it could be, a, it is a crime, and uh, is there more focus on the girls than on the boys? Thank you for that. I mean, my starting point would be, let us look at all the sub-Saharan countries that you have mentioned. There are many things in common when you look at them. Poverty is rampage within all these countries, South Africa included. Unemployment is very high, and, and most that are feeling it are actually the young people. It, it is very high. The prospect of getting a job right now as a young person in South Africa is quite challenging. And uh, yes, most of the sexual and reproductive health interventions has primarily been focused on the girl child with the reason that uh, they are the ones that sees the immediate outcome of fully pregnant as a young person. But to a greater extent, if you look at interventions that I have mentioned, comprehensive sexuality education, integrated school health program, adolescents, youth health, uh, um, adolescents and, and, and youth health, um, youth friendly services interventions, all of them are focused on children holistically, whether it's a girl or a boy. The challenge is, and also, which is also the truth, yes, a little number or a limited number of them would be, you know, impregnated by their own peers, by the high number in terms of what we have seen with the other statistics. The age gap in South Africa, you will find that uh, it's, it's about five year gap. So such that a 15 year old is likely to be impregnated by a 19 year old or a 20 year old or even older. So we have seen that, that uh, that generational gap plays a major role in contributing to some of these pregnancies, which is the reason why we are lamenting as civil society. Let us make the perpetrators known so that the law can take its course. All right. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Important conversations to have, especially as we just recently concluded the celebration for the International Day of the Girl Child. Well done to you and your organization and keep doing more. Thank you and uh, all the best with the conversations. I, I hope it's some stay. You know, all the countries you have mentioned, we are able to turn the situation around and to protect our children, make sure that they are, they are, they, they are able to learn and uh, they are able to survive to their full potential and become productive adults. Right. Absolutely. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you and goodbye.